Howdy AP Precal, it's Ms. Kosh. We are going to talk today about vertical asymptotes and holes. Um, and these are things that cause us to have a restriction in our domain when we're looking at rational functions. Um, so today we're going to do rational, um, we're going to do vertical asymptotes, holes, zeros, and inequalities, but we'll probably break that into a couple of videos. Um, so to begin with, I've heard of a hole as um, they, sometimes we call it a case of removable, Remove, I can't spell. <laughs> Removable discontinuity. Um, uh, anyway, I'm not your spelling teacher. But what happens, There's we have different kinds of discontinuity, and they call it removable because I like to think of it as it removes itself from the equation. So notice if it's on the top and the bottom, right here and right here, it would remove itself from the equation, but it's still undefined at that point. Um, so something like this, this equation here, f of x equals x minus 1 times x plus 2 over x minus 1. This is going to look just like the line y equals x plus 2, except it's going to have a hole when x is equal to 1, because um, that has been restricted. You're not Chuck Norris. You can't divide by 0. Um, so you have to remove that from your domain. Um, and it, because it canceled in the top and the bottom, then it's a hole. Okay, here we go. So on this one, one of the things that's you, that's new to you, perhaps, is we're going to talk about, we're going to use the limit notation to talk about what happens as we approach that hole. So we'll say the limit as x approaches 1 from the, the negative tells us that we're approaching from the left. Um, so this is saying, what happens as I get closer and closer to 1? Well, here's my hole at 1. Um, I don't know how well you can see this. Let's see if I zoom in. Um, as I approach that hole right there, I'm getting closer and closer to the value of 3. Okay, so what um, what this graph is, I think we're looking at g of x, or, or I don't know which one we're looking at. But what we would do is we'd plug in 1 to, um, I'll show you how they found the 3 in just a minute. I think that's a better way to say this. Um, okay, so what's happening, though, is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to the y value there at the hole. So the function's not defined at the hole, but the limit as we get closer and closer is equal to the, um, the y value of the hole. And this is the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x, and that is equal to positive 3 also. Notice with the asymptotes, um, hang on, let me zoom back out. Notice with the asymptotes, we're approaching this, um, they were talking about the limit as x goes to 1 from negative infinity. So now we have an asymptote here. Um, as I approach from the left, I'm coming this way, and I go down and down and down, I'm going to negative infinity. As I approach from the right, so the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x, that coming in here is going off to positive infinity. That, I think, is the only thing new um, that you wouldn't have seen in Algebra 2. Okay, let's jump in. We'll do these examples, and then I might start to the next video. I see right here that these, um, we have a hole when x is equal to negative 3 because those would have been removed from the equation. And we have a vertical asymptote when x is equal to 5. Um, and we also have a 0 when, um, so these things have removed it themselves. Um, this one right here would give us a 0. Anytime the numerator can um, be set equal to 0, that's a 0. So we'll talk about it in a minute, but we have a 0 when x is equal to 2. Okay, the next one, what happens here is we remove, um, we're removing, this would cancel with one of the terms, and this would cancel with one of the terms. And so what we're left with is you think, oh, I have a hole at 2, um, and I do. I have a hole when x is equal to 2. Maybe I, let's not find the coordinate. We'll just say when x is equal to 2. Um, but when I plug in 2, it's actually going to be the point 2 comma 0. So it's a 0, but it's also a hole. Um, and then we have, we would think, oh, this removed itself from the equation. But the new equation that it looks like is um, x plus 1 in the denominator, which means that we have an asymptote um, at x equals negative 1. You know what? I can explain that better. Um, Let me try that again. Uh, sorry. So if I have y is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 2 squared over x minus 2 times x plus 1 squared, we have removed, we removed um, an x minus 2. Okay, so we think, do we have a hole when x is equal to 2? Well, let's see. So this is going to look like 
it's going to look like the equation y is equal to x minus 2 over x plus 1. So if we just look at this equation, what we know here is that we have a 0 um, when x equals 2 from the numerator. We have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, when um, x equals negative 1. Well, we also removed from this equation, we also removed this part. Um, and so we removed x plus 1, and so we're looking at this. Okay, does that mean x equals negative 1 as a whole? Well, no, because it's um, an asymptote, and that trumps. Okay, so if we were to graph this, we would have an asymptote at x equals negative 1. We would have a 0 at 2, but that 2 is a whole. So here at 2, we'd have the whole right here. Um, and so then this is, this is the same degree. So we also have, we have a horizontal asymptote when y is equal to 1. That's a positive. That's just the tick mark anyway. And this is at, oh, I lied, negative 1. So we're looking something like this and something like this with a hole there at the point 2. Um, and we can double check. Let's plug in. We can find this value when we plug in 0. So 0 minus 2 is negative 2 over 1. So this would be the point um, 0, negative 2. OK, um, let's look at this one. And then I'm going to stop the video, and we'll, we'll keep going in another one. This would be equal to 1 over x times x squared plus 4. And if I plug in 0, I would get the whole denominator of 0. You're not, I'm not Chuck Norris. I can't divide by 0. So I have a vertical asymptote when x is equal to 0. But this part is different because I'm any number I plug in is either going to be 0 or positive once I square it. So, And then I add 4, and it's still 4 more than whatever it had been. So there's no way that can ever be equal to 0. Does that let, or another way to think about that is if I said x squared plus 4 equals 0, and I try and solve it, I get x squared is equal to negative 4, which means my solutions are going to be non-real. So there is no real number that gives me a 0 in the denominator for that part. So the only thing that's of interest here is we have a vertical asymptote when x equals 0. Okay, come back for more.